Good morning to you. That's right. Two hikers are missing in the San Gabriel Mountains. One above Azusa. The other is British actor Julian Sands, and he was reported missing on Friday evening in the Mount Baldy area. The 65 year old was said to have gone hiking by himself and was headed towards Mount Baldy Bowl, a rugged and dangerous area, especially during winter conditions. San Bernardino County Sheriff's air operation crews have been scouring Mount Baldy for Sands since learning of the situation as weather allows. On Wednesday, Sands car was towed from the Manker Flats trailhead area. The actor has appeared in movies such as Room with a View, Arachnophobia, and Warlock. Over the last month, sheriff's officials have responded to 14 rescue missions on the mountain, and sadly, two people did not survive, including 56-year-old Crystal Gonzalez Landis, a mother of four and avid hiker. Earlier this month, she slid down Mount Baldy 500 feet or more. Other hikers came to her aid. Officials are urging hikers to avoid the area, saying that snow and ice conditions are not favorable for them, even those that feel they have a high level experience. And in LA County, Sheriff's Department rescue teams are looking for missing hikers. 61 year old Bob Gregory of Hawthorne, his family reported him missing Monday afternoon. Search teams are looking in the Crystal Lake area of the San Gabriel Mountains above Azusa. Hello folks and welcome back to another case study where I talk about and analyze some of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. In this segment, I'll be covering the mysterious disappearance of a well-known actor and outdoor enthusiast whom vanished during the hike up SoCal's Mount Baldy on January 13th of 2023. Now I briefly touched on this case in my latest volume of disappearances and also created a short for it as well. But I thought I'd take a more in-depth look at this case and the circumstances leading up to the man's disappearance. I'm sure like many of you listening, I figured Julian Sands would have been found by now. But as we continue to march deeper into April, this case is quickly becoming cold case material. So let's go ahead and get that ball rolling. 65 year old Julian Sands was first reported missing on Friday, January 13th by his wife after he set off to hike the San Bernardino County area mountain. The actor's disappearance has gained international attention with family and friends like John Malkovich speaking out about their friendship. So here we are, nearly three months later, and despite an extensive search and rescue effort, well, there just isn't any sign of Julian. So what in the hell happened? Well, before we dive any deeper, I'm going to talk about Julian's impressive career and what may have brought him to the area to begin with. Julian Sands was born on January 4th of 1958 and began his acting career in the early 80s and would continue right up to the date of his disappearance. He is mostly known for his roles in The Killing Fields, A Room with the View, Warlock, Arachnophobia, Boxing Helena, Leaving Las Vegas, as well as roles in television such as 24, Smallville, and Banshee. At the time of his disappearance, Julian was working on a project called Seneca, a film on the creation of earthquakes. Now throughout his film and television career, Julian was physically active in the outdoors and it was not uncommon for him to go on hiking excursions between projects. For Julian, it was his way of hitting that reset button and balancing out his profession. Julian is even quoted as stating, I'm happiest being close to the mountain summit on a glorious cold morning. So what was different about this particular morning? Well, before we discuss his disappearance any further, let's talk about Mount Baldy and the San Bernardino mountain area. Just to give you an idea of what both Julian and Search and Rescue were up against. We'll also talk about the mountain's dark and unfortunate past as Julian is not the first hiker to vanish off that mountain in recent times. Mount Baldy, though quite popular with outdoor enthusiasts, 
has claimed many hikers over the years, and is no stranger to danger, as we occasionally hear about in news reports. Even around the time of Julian's disappearance, others went missing on that mountain as well. Some of these folks were eventually found deceased with a variety of injuries, such as falls and or exposure, while others have never been located at all. So what is it about Baldy that seems to swallow up too many of its visitors? Mount Baldy is located in the San Gabriel Mountains in San Bernardino County of California. It is surrounded by the Angeles National Forest and located just 12 miles north of Ontario. The area has a long history, going back a hundred years, and I could easily spend a day talking about it, but we'll focus on the meat and potatoes of this case for now. Mount Baldy's climate varies from one extreme to another depending on the seasons, seeing temperatures as low as negative 10 degrees during the cooler months to nearly 100 degrees during the warmer ones. Annual snowfall ranges between 50 to 60 inches with plenty of precipitation in between. Unless specified by park employees, the mountain is open year-round, drawing thousands of visitors each season. Some of the more popular hikes on Baldy include the 10-mile bridge to nowhere in East Fork Trail, the 1.5-mile San Antonio Falls Trail, the 11-mile Mount Baldy Notch Trail, and the 12-mile Ice House Canyon to Cucamonga Peak Trail, just to name a few. These hikes range from easy to advanced difficulty, short to long, and so on. Now, I was unable to find any information to confirm this, but based on the search and rescue details, I believe Julian had chosen the Mount Baldy Summit Trail. This is actually considered the easiest way to Mount Baldy Peak at 10,069 feet in elevation. This trail begins at the top of Notch Restaurant and follows along the Devil's Backbone. It's about a seven mile round trip trail with a gain of 2,200 feet. Folks also have the option to take a service road from the ski area parking lot to the top of Notch Restaurant. This option is shorter at six miles with a 3,500 foot elevation gain, but is considered more strenuous. Once hikers reach the summit, they are met with a large, flat, and treeless panoramic view of Southern California cities, deserts, mountains, and oceans, hence the name Mount Baldy. Julian seems like the kind of guy who likes a good challenge and may have taken a more difficult route to the summit, though I was unable to find any specifics to support this theory. Let's see what the search and rescue effort had to say about the location in question. But before we switch gears, we need to take a deeper look at the surrounding geography. The Angeles National Forest covers approximately 700,000 acres of wilderness and completely surrounds the San Gabriel and the Sierra Palona Mountains. The National Forest was established in 1908 and is located primarily within L.A. County, with a small portion extending eastward into southwestern San Bernardino County. Angeles National Forest contains several nationally designated wilderness areas, the Cucamongo Wilderness, Magic Mountain Wilderness, Pleasant Views Ridge Wilderness, San Gabriel Wilderness, and the Sheep Mountains Wilderness. As you can see, there's plenty of wilderness to get lost in out there. Could Julian have gotten lost? Well, what about the weather? Well, as I mentioned earlier, it can get pretty messy out there. Well, it so happens to be that unfortunately, Julian entered that park during one of the worst times of the year, January. And as we learn more about the search effort, we'll begin to see a clearer picture of what conditions were like on that Friday afternoon. In fact, search efforts would be hindered continuously throughout the course of the effort as powerful storms battered the area one after another, bringing with it severe winter weather. 
So let's go ahead and switch gears and talk about the extensive search effort involved for the man. The search would kick off almost immediately after Julian's disappearance on January 13th, involving hundreds of professional search and rescue personnel from several agencies, and turning out to be one of the largest search efforts in modern times. The San Bernardino Sheriff's Department, Fontana Sheriff's Station, the West Valley Search and Rescue Division, the California Highway Patrol, local and state law enforcement, as well as park officials, coordinated the first round of searches, focusing primarily on the Mount Baldy area and eventually expanding their search zone to include surrounding trails in wilderness areas inside the Angeles National Forest. Searchers had attempted to hone in on a particular area of the trail where the CHP's RICO device hit on a possible electronic signal in the early days of the investigation. Now, around the time of his disappearance, his silver Volvo was located at the trailhead, covered in a fine layer of snow, which told searchers that the car had sat untouched for several days at that point. There was nothing inside the vehicle to indicate what may have happened to Julian, and everything appeared normal. Well, on January 25th, searchers would expand their operation to include continuous ground and aerial searches. That included the aid of K-9s, helicopters, and drones with FLIR technology. These efforts would be complicated by a series of powerful winter storms that would cease operations for days at a time until conditions would approve. On February 25th, an entire month later, the search effort was scaled back due to a total lack of clues, limited resources, and persistent winter weather. At this point, the effort would become a recovery one as the reality of the situation continued to weigh heavily on everyone involved, including the many friends and family that came to know Julian. Now, before we discuss the possibilities of what occurred out there, I'm going to talk about others who went missing in that area as well at the time Julian did, painting an even darker picture for Baldy and the treacherous winter conditions that plagued the mountain at the turn of the new year. Since 2020, rescue operations have undertaken more than 100 searches for missing hikers on Mount Baldy, with six confirmed fatalities as of February 2023, according to the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department. Julian was actually one of three hikers to go missing during the month of January in the Mount Baldy area. Jin Chung, a 75-year-old North Hollywood man, was reported missing at 6 a.m. Sunday, January 22nd, after a hike at Mount Baldy, and was found safe a few days later. Mr. Chung suffered some weather-related injuries, but was able to walk out with the assistance of the crew members. On January 18th, a 61-year-old Hawthorne resident named Robert Gregory went missing after failing to return home from his hike near Mount Islip. His body would eventually be discovered exactly one month later on February 18th, about 300 feet below the summit of Mount Islip also in the Angeles National Forest. Now, I've covered several other cases over the years, including 52-year-old Sri Mokapati, along with a 32-year-old search and rescue worker named Timothy Staples, who was fatally injured looking for Sri, and even some cases I just haven't covered yet. If you do a deep dive into missing hikers in the San Bernardino Mountains, you'll find many other cases that didn't quite get the same media coverage as Julian's did. So as we can see, even for the experienced outdoor enthusiast, Mount Baldy can have disastrous results if you're not prepared. And even if you are, well that still doesn't guarantee your safety. There are so many circumstances, both predictable and unpredictable, to consider while hiking on Baldy or anywhere for that matter. This should be a stern reminder of the dangers that lurk up on that mountain. But even so, 
chances are people will continue to go missing up there. So now that we have a general idea of what hiking conditions were like on the day he went missing, let's go ahead and talk about what may have happened to Julian. I think the number one scenario that comes to mind is exactly the kind of scenario we didn't want, but many of us expect. With all the accidents reported on Baldy, it's not hard to imagine the same kind of scenario playing out for Julian. All it takes is one wrong move, or being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Did Julian simply suffer a fall, only to become trapped or incapacitated? Well, we know that there was plenty of ice and snow on the trail at the time of his disappearance. Could this have been a factor? If that's the case, and he did suffer an accident, well, if the fall didn't get him, the weather most certainly would have. Temperatures for January 13th weren't very forgiving, as they ranged from upper 40s during the day to below freezing at night. Throw in some high winds, sleet and snow, and you got yourself a whole forest of problems. Hypothermia from exposure could very well be at play here. But if that's the case, why weren't searchers able to find him? Often, when a person becomes injured or exposed to the elements, they get disoriented and begin to lose their sense of direction. It's not uncommon to find lost hikers in areas that seem to defy logic and completely off course from their intended routes. Just like those lost at sea, eventually dehydration will set in, causing folks to make very poor decisions, such as drinking seawater or jumping from a boat to swim toward an imaginary island created by a mirage. The same thing can occur in the wilderness. In emergency situations, many folks will find themselves doing things they normally wouldn't do. They often wander into oblivion and are eventually swallowed up by the wilderness. It's a real needle in the haystack out there when that happens. Julian could have simply become lost. So what other scenarios could have played out here? Well, let's talk about animal predation. According to the National Park Service, it's not uncommon to see fox, coyote, mountain lions, and bear up on Baldy. But during the winter months, it's a little different. Now, it's a common misconception that mountain lions hibernate during the winter months. While that's mostly accurate for bears, it doesn't always hold true for mountain lions. You are more likely to see a mountain lion in lower elevations and closer to population centers during the colder months for food purposes. If you think about it, Mount Baldy is not exactly the tallest rock out there, and it's no Everest, and by comparison, it's a smaller mountain, with the summit only reaching around 10,000 feet. At these elevations, I'm sure predators have no issues hunting in those areas during the winter months. And the same applies with fox, coyotes, bobcats, etc. So could animal predation be to blame here? Sure, it's always possible. But there just doesn't seem to be any evidence pointing to this scenario. Well, what about foul play? Could Julian have run into an obsessed fan? Now, I really consider this scenario as well. Now, we've all heard the horror stories about some crazed fans losing their minds over their favorite celebrities. Stephen King wrote a book about this very scenario, which would eventually be adapted into a film. It's called Misery. If you've ever read the book or seen the movie, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's about an author who gets into an accident and becomes paralyzed, only to become rescued by a possessive fan with dark and sinister plans to never let him go. I highly recommend it. Now, I'm not saying this is what happened to Julian, but you never know what people are capable of in these situations. Now, could this have been a simple exchange gone wrong? Could he have angered somebody else out there on that trail? 
Could it have been accidental and somebody may be covering it? In 2007, a 47-year-old hacker named Pete Absalon was fatally wounded when another hiker began tossing rocks down a mountain, completely oblivious of anyone below him. Well, this careless little act is what did him in. Could this type of situation be responsible? Well, here's another scenario I've been kicking around. Now, Julian was no spring chicken, and at 65 years old, he had tasted the fruits of a successful acting career, even up to the time of his disappearance. But was Julian truly happy? Was there something deeper going on in his personal life that we just don't know about? Was he feeling the stress of an ever-changing industry and felt the need to escape? Well, we all know that feeling. And we all know that Julian loved the outdoors. And it was his way of balancing out his professional life. But sometimes we reach a point in our life where we feel stagnant and unfulfilled, like we've hit a dead end. I've been there, but I know that feeling passes and the pendulum swings the other way eventually. But for some folks, it may be too much for them. Sometimes the thought of ending it all is the kind of escape that sounds most appealing. I'm not saying Julian wanted to disappear, but as we've seen in other cases, this scenario shouldn't be ignored. Now, I don't believe this is the case at all, but we need to look at every angle here. It's hard to say what exactly happened out there on the day he went missing. But something tells me the answers aren't too far off and that when we eventually find him, the clues may have been there right in front of us the entire time. I don't know if overconfidence played a part in this case, but that's also something we need to take into consideration. All too often, we hear about those experienced outdoor enthusiasts who bite off more than they can chew, even in areas they're familiar with and frequented many times. Just because you have a positive experience with Trip 1 doesn't necessarily mean you have the same experience with Trip 2 or Trip 3, and so on. Whatever led to Julian's disappearance is hiding a secret. There just doesn't seem to be much evidence surrounding this case, and I will admit, it does feel somewhat shrouded in mystery, much like Julian himself. The man was a bit of a mystery, and aside from the many roles he played during his professional career, he was best at being himself, and many were drawn to his charisma, wisdom, kindness, and friendship. As the months continue to slip on by, the chances of a positive outcome for this case continues to diminish. If nothing else, though, I hope the many friends and family of Julian can have some closure by the end of this. But until then, we'll keep that torch of hope lit, and we can only speculate based on what we do and don't know. And until there's more evidence, we'll just have to keep at it. Thanks for joining me in this segment, and may we never forget the sad and strange disappearance of Julian Sands.